Hello, here we are for another bit of Mr. Monday, which is part of the Keys to the Kingdom series, all written by Garth Nix himself. There he is. Uh, so we left the story halfway through chapter 10 last time, didn't we? When uh, Susie, which is Arthur's new companion in this world, we don't know what the world is called yet, do we? And um, they were being chased, weren't they? I they I can't remember what they sergeants I can't remember what the exact word in was they called them but do you remember they were um there were lots of them all chasing after them weren't they and Arthur had just used the key to seal a door up hadn't he so we'll pick it up from there shh ordered Susie gently then in that weird deep voice she added touch the door handle and tell it to lock do you remember the will kept on trying to speak through her didn't it Arthur touched the key to the curved iron handle and whispered, Lock. At the same time, he heard the crash of boots in the corridor outside. His heart hammered in his chest almost as loud as the footsteps that came towards their hiding place. Then the handle rattled once, twice, but didn't turn. Locked, Sergeant, bellowed a deep voice. It sounded a bit weird, as if the speaker had a metal funnel stuck into his mouth. Sort of tinny, Arthur thought. The footsteps retreated, and a few seconds later, Arthur heard several heavy-set people going up the stairs. He opened his mouth to whisper something to Susie, but she held up her hand, mostly covered by a mothy and woolen glove, and shook her head. Several minutes passed. They stood silently in the closet, listening to the footsteps and occasional shouts. Then there was a clattering on the stairs, a sudden rush, and the handle was tried again. Locked, Sergeant boomed the same voice. Then the footsteps went away and Arthur heard the front door slam. They do know everything twice, said Susie. At least the metal ones do. The ordinary commissioners. They're pretty stupid. Sergeants are a different trouble. They're not made and most of them have fallen from up above and been demoted to commissioner sergeants as a punishment. Come on, we should be able to sneak out now. Unlock the door. <laughs> that accent is getting worse. Arthur touched the door with a key and said, Open. The door sprang open with sudden violence, slamming against the wall. Susie stepped out first. Arthur was following when he surprised when her surprised cry gave him just enough warning to whip the key back behind him. Oh, Sergeant! A commissioner sergeant stood in the hall, all eight feet of him, though on closer examination, a foot of that was from his top hat. He had a waxed moustache which he was stroking and a very sharp long nose under piercing blue eyes. The gold stripes on his blue sleeves gleamed in the gaslight. Well, 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 he said. His voice was deep, but not tinny like the other commissioner. He pulled out a notebook out of his coat pocket, flipped it open and took a pencil stub out from a thin sleeve on the side of the notebook. I wondered why that closet would be locked. What have we here? Your names, numbers, rank, and business. Susie Turquoise Blue, one eight two three six seven five four two and a half in pre in precedence, ink filler six class on ink filling business. Halfway through her answer, Susie's voice changed into the very deep, scratchy tone that Arthur had heard before. The sergeant's pencil stopped. Your voice. What happened to it? I got a bit of a frog in my throat said Susie, still in the same deep voice. A frog? Where did you get it? said the sergeant enviously. Present, said Susie in a normal voice. Floated in nice as you like, hardly damaged. Might even last a year if I'm lucky. I've never had a frog in the throat, said the sergeant sadly. Had a small nose tickle once. Confiscated it from a porter who had it on a fl from a flotsam raker. Went for a twelve month before it wore out. Very distinctive. Not as flamboyant as a sneeze, but very nice. Where was I? Who's this other lad? Oh, um, he's one of our lot, interrupted Susie. Arthur Nightblack. Got dropped on his head in a pool of nothing down below a couple hundred years ago and ain't been right since. He's always getting lost. That's why we was in that closet. I was looking for him. Papers, ordered the sergeant, looking at Arthur. He's lost them said Susie quickly, got frightened off by the nifflins, wriggled out of his coat and went hiding, except the nifflins ate him right up. Ate them up, corrected the sergeant. He peered down at Susie. Now I haven't got anything against you ink fillers, but orders is orders. I'll have to take him to the inquiry clock. Inquiries? Susie snorted. He could be there for years. They'll dock his pay, and him with a new coat to get and all. 
Can we sort this out gentlemanly-like? You ain't written anything yet, have you? The sergeant frowned, then slowly pushed the pencil back into its sleeve and folded his notebook. What do you suggest, Miss Blue? This frog, said Susie. Do you want it? The sergeant hesitated. Free gift, said Susie. And it's not as if you'll get cribbed for it. When was the last general inspection? Ten thousand years or more, said the sergeant softly. But I've made mistakes before. I wasn't always a commissioner. I wasn't, so I was. Go on, said Susie, her voice even deeper and more authoritative. Take a look. She held her hand in front of her mouth and spat into her palm. Gross, exclaimed Arthur, though it wasn't spit that came out, but a small and very beautiful emerald green frog. It sat in Susie's hand and emitted a deep, poignant call. Give it a try encouraged Susie. She took a rather dirty handkerchief from her pocket and gave the frog a quick polish. Didn't seem to mind. The sergeant was quite mesmerised by the frog. He looked around, then reached out and picked it up. He stared at it in his hand, then gulped it down as if he were eating a mint. His mouth fro closed and he froze in place. As him sorted, said Susie in a normal voice, and me free, so no hard feelings, Arthur, but I was impressed on this duty and I have a very urgent ointment. She dashed away with the last word, but the sergeant's hand shot out and grabbed her coattails. Susie tried to shuck out of her coat, but couldn't manage it before the sergeant transferred his grip to her neck. Ow! Ow! Leave off! The will has need of you, Susie Blue, said the sergeant, but once again it was not his voice, but the deep voice that had previously come out of Susie. There may be rewards. Susie stopped struggling. Rewards? Only maybe don't sound so certain. Arthur stepped forward. Look, I don't know what's going on here or what the will wants with me, but it's very important that I find out what is going on. I think I think a lot of people might die if I don't, so I'm going to need your help, Susie. Arthur spoke with passion. He could feel the fear and tension trapped inside him like a steam in a kettle. Back in his world, in his town, the quarantine zone would be expanding. The hospitals would be crowded, possibly overflowing, already unable to cope. Arthur could almost see his mother and her team in the lab working feverishly, feverishly. Perhaps they were already sniffling, sneezing with the colds that marked the onset of the plague. People die, said Susie. You mean... You really are from outside the house? From the secondary realms? I'm from outside the house, said Arthur. I don't know what you mean, though, about secondary realms. You are a mortal, a real live mortal. Yeah, I suppose so, said Arthur. So am I, sort of. Well, I used to be, said Susie. She hesitated, then said, Will you help me get back? Will you help all of us get back? Who? said Arthur. Everyone in the city? No, said Susie scornfully. Everyone grown belongs here. They're what's called denizens of the house. I mean us, the children, the ones that followed the piper all those years ago. This is a trivial matter, intoned the sergeant, or whatever it was that spoke through him anyway. Arthur must find a way to bring back the will. Everything else will follow. I'm not helping you unless you help us, said Susie. That deal? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean... If I can help, I will, yeah. Susie smiled and held out her hand. Arthur took it and she shook vigorously. Danger, said the sergeant, cupping a hand to his ear. Commissioner is approached. There is also a great likelihood that Monday's noon or dusk knows Arthur has come through the front door and has taken charge of a search. We must get away at once. Well, you better leave this great lunk behind, said Susie. Can't take him with us. There was no answer, but the sergeant's mouth opened and the green frog climbed out, leaving the man frozen like a statue. The frog jumped over to Susie's shoulder and started to climb up into her mouth, but she caught it in her hand and stuffed it in an inside pocket that she buttoned shut. Not any more, froggy, she said. Once caught, twice careful. Come on. Where are we going? said Arthur. He felt quite confused. So much had happened so quickly, he wondered if he was ever going to get a chance to sit down and ask some questions, or, more importantly get questions answered. The Office of the Efficient Lower General of the Lower Atrium. The where? The Efficient... Gosh, I can't say it. The Efficiencia General is in charge of making everything work efficiently in the Lower Atrium, explained Susie as they exited through a back door into a lane. Only there ain't one. An Efficiencia General, that is. Apparently the last one never got replaced when he moved up and there's no staff neither so that's why here i live off shift of course is it far away thirty nine hundred floors said susie pointing straight upwards
Blimey. 3,900 floors? Goodness me. All right. Okay. I'm sorry I haven't been here for a couple of sessions. I've been a bit busy with work. But hey, we're nearly at the weekend now, so I'll be able to be a little bit more free and do some more chapters. See you soon.